right, welcome to The Buff Show. Today, in this episode, we go over how sellers should look at selling their homes and like common pitfalls and stuff we run into. Basically, it's the harsh realities of what you need to do and what you need to look for when selling a home. Yep. Me, so, uh, so Peyton Anderson and Ben Larson go at this, and it's a good one. There's a lot of good nuggets yeah. in there. And layman's terms, too. We're not fancying this up. We're coming after you, sellers, giving, <laughs> you, giving you the hard truth, so be <laughs> yep. ready. Be ready. Today, we got Ben Larson in the house. How's it going? And I guess he, he likes to wear his earphones like this. I've never done this before. E- explain why you like that again. Because I like to hear it naturally, and I feel like I sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> it's weird in my ear hole. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I like it. So what do you got for us today? Well, what I want to talk about today is giving sellers the actual expectations of what needs to be done when they sell their home and not lead them into it blindly. I want them to know about all the boo-boos and all the pitfalls along the way. So kind of like preparing an easier, like how to selling your house sucks no matter what, but how to make it suck less. Right. Like Prepare for the blows and right. roll, be able to roll with them instead of taking everything on the chin as a surprise. Yeah. So first line, we did. We just have a few notes that we're going to follow, but time of year. Um, and so this one's this one's great. So springtime is obviously the best time to sell home. That's when people are out and about. They're more active. They're wanting to move, and that extends almost into August, September, as school start. And people are really driving to get into a home mm-hmm. when their kids get to a new school district. So right. But one thing to consider with that, that's the best time of year to sell a home. But if you have a home that you're trying to buy after you sell your home, you might want to try to time it so you can get sold and then buy sometime in December when prices are cheaper and lower. No one's really looking for homes around Christmas. Right. Yeah. People don't really consider how cyclical just the seasons are in real estate and how typically if you are buying a house, you're going to be beating other buyers down with a stick in, in the spring. But in the fall, you got sellers that are like, we got to get this house sold before Christmas, and they'll do anything to get it sold. Yeah, give it up for uh, for cheap just to get out of it or to get into a new home if they have one under contract as well. Mm-hmm. So, And I think if you're a seller, like considering when the best time is to sell a house, but also that's not all you should rely on. Like there's some sellers that you have to sell in December or January. Even it's interesting, like July always seems to be slower because like everybody's gone on vacation. vacation. And yeah. yeah, okay. So, but it's not end of the world if you have to sell in December or January. Oh. But if you can time it to where it's April or May, right. like that's a great time. The best thing too is just be prepared so you can choose your timing, not yeah. just, hey, I've got to sell my house right now. Let's go, let's find this new house. That's what we're going to cover today is we want you to be prepared so it's not these quick last-minute decisions you have to make. Yeah. So what's the next thing they should consider? Well, the, the other thing as far as the time is rates. Right now, rates are high. So you want to watch what future rates are going to do. Are people going to start panic buying as rates start dropping down? Is that a good time to list? Right before a rate hike, the feds are going to announce, hey, we're going to raise the rates and mortgage rates are going to go up behind that. It's almost like a a feeding frenzy. Mm -hmm. Everyone is almost panic buying, and that makes for bad decisions on a buyer's part if they don't have a good agent to lead them into that scenario. And the the Fed, they kind of dictate a lot about the market. And if you can, they put out their reports, and they tell you what they're anticipating on doing in the future. Last fall and in summer, they were like, hey, we're trying to catch inflation. We're Mm -hmm. raising the rate. That's what's going to happen. We don't care about a soft landing. They said that. And so we're like, huh, wonder what they're going to do next month. You know, it just was pretty obvious what was going to happen. But now it's looking like it's the opposite. Now they're like, hey, soft landing. I think we we can get ourselves out of this. And they're less aggressive. So having that that macro vision on where rates are heading and Mm -hmm. what's going on can also help. Because if you don't have to sell right now in the dead of winter hey this spring it's looking like rates are softening they are we're seeing it right now and if you can kind of plan for that rates will be more affordable in a few months and should be we can't fully predict that right that's what we're seeing right now rates should be more more affordable and it'll be a better time to sell those timing things in your mind when you're looking to sell right and some markets are affected more than others. There are markets that are very generic and very first-time home buyers. And there's some markets that, I mean, the world could be on fire and people are still going to buy and sell homes in like a highly desired area, such mm-hmm. as like 
Ogden Valley, Morgan, yeah, um, some different places down in Salt Lake and Utah County. Even inside of those markets, there are certain areas of a micro market. So another thing to consider when actually selling your home is talk to your agent, see what is my area like. You know, does it fluctuate with the market or does it stay pretty steady? Yeah, a, a good example I have with that is I have a bunch of like last summer and fall, we had four or five different lots listed. Nobody wants to buy a lot in December. You want to put your feet on the ground and see it. And exactly. It. There, people aren't out lot shopping, but come March, April, May, sure enough, like we're going to have a lot of people. So the strategy we've always had with sellers on those is, hey, let's not just accumulate days on market in the winter time. Let's pull it off, let it reset. You used to have to let it sit off the market for 90 days or three months to let it reset. So after December-ish, we'd pull it off and then relist it in March. So you, you say days on market. That is basically once you are listed on the MLS, it'll actually start counting. Yeah. And even myself personally, when I look when I look at something that's been on the market and I see it's been on for 100 days or 90 days or way over like your, your average daily time on market... I think, hey, they didn't list right or they don't they have something wrong and I either think as a buyer, where can I exploit this to get a better price? Or as a seller you need to start looking at it going, where did we mess up? Did we not is it something we've done with our house and our pricing or is our timing? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. if you can keep your days on the market less, it's best. They just changed it with the MLS now. If you pull a house off the market for thirty days, it will actually reset your days on market. Okay, so it's not, it's not going to have to go on the discount rack after 30 days being in the store. Right, yeah. So that's a good thing to, to watch out for. But there's def- definitely different properties, and depending on what you're trying to sell, there's different times of the year where it makes sense to be selling that. Right. And if you're aware of that, and you mentioned who you hire, like why, you, is, why is that do important? You, do you think that uh, some people do it faster than others? Oh, for sure. Do you yeah. think faster is always better? No. Well, I agree. I, I feel like planning is great. There's a difference between fast and being prompt. So being fast, you're just rushing through it, being prompt and on time and, and meeting the needs. It's the second something arises, you're actually working on it. You're not given a week delay. You're being, mm-hmm. you know, it really matters that somebody is putting you as a priority and that has everything to do with time. If it, if it takes you ask me today and I take a week to ask the person that I need to to get something done, it just trickle effects down all the way down till your months and months. Well, what's that saying? You can have the price, the quality, or the time, and you can only pick two. Two of them. Yeah. yeah. You can't have yeah. all three. We have to really focus on delivering a really good quality, and our prices, we're not the cheapest, but we'll get you the highest price out of your house. That's our goal. So if you want somebody that's cheap and can throw it up real fast, you might suffer on the quality, which then is not going to get you the, the best price on your house. So... Our goal and strategy has always been amazing quality, great marketing, and that doesn't come mm-hmm. fast. No, it doesn't. And that's, that's why we're doing this episode is because people will come to us and be like, hey, I want to sell my house yesterday. Mm-hmm. And we're like, okay, well, it takes us a while to get ready and to get you ready. People don't realize the process. With a seller, there's so, much re- so many resources that go in and so much time and actually actual money spent and work done before you even go on a live like yeah it's all it's all a preparation and then you present mm-hmm. everyone thinks listing houses that you put on the mls and you get buyers to try to come buy your house listing a house in my opinion is before you even put it on the mls listing a house is hey talking to an agent he tells you what you, he thinks how you should prepare your home then you get a little bit closer you start staging doing pictures and then really posting on the mls that's the last step other than accepting a deal yeah and, so, peop- and people think like hey let's come over get pictures we'll throw it up and yep. call it a day and you're like no <laughs> like that's not it, how you do it it's so front heavy but the better you work the front the better you work the front the tell end becomes a lot less stressful mm-hmm. and you'll and get painful right and you'll get w- way better outcome at the end right. so it's it's so, kind it's kind of like dating if, if you're going Coffee. back <laughs> it's, been, it's, it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> for both of us i always compare this to sellers i'm like if we were in the dating world again, and what are the like, my brother and my brother and brother-in-law are on it. You have like mutual and these dating platforms, but it's hinge. Based, hinge. Yeah, I got a buddy that does the hinge. So you're you're like swipe left or swipe right if you right. like. But if you have a bad picture, bad presentation, you're not got to dangle showing, the right carrot. Sh- yeah, showing right. your best self. People, you're not going to get those swipes. 
that's the same with like selling a home. If you don't have everything right from down from the photos to the staging down to like even when they first step into the house, it can go like that will dramatically change the course of your listing history of, of, of who sees your house dating profile. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Another another thing too is the areas and places that you put your home on. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're just going on the MLS and then they forget about it, that time and who you work with you're pushing ads, we're doing multiple sites, we're constantly getting you back in front of people, just like if you're dating, you're going to get on nine different dating sites. Right. Better your odds. Exactly. Social media, we post it everywhere, and some people don't like photos as much. Other people like videos. Like, we're trying to do, incorporate it all in open houses. That, like, bumps it back up. So there's so many strategies that apply to selling your house in different markets and, like, working with different buyers. It's just like there's plethora of things that come up that huh didn't really think about that even us run into new stuff oh yeah and we're huh those are like building blocks that then can apply to like our future clients to be like hey this is a stumbling block you should hey. probably be be aware of and after hundreds of transactions it's nice to be able to be able to offer our clients that level of identification yeah. yeah we've done we know the stumbling blocks because we've hit our shins on them before exactly we, we have we, we've suffered the pains and that that's what almost every industry you, you you find the pitfalls and you your job is to prevent it that's that's the industry really right it, it really is and it's not enough to just oh I've sold a house five years ago I've done it once I know what I'm doing right because forms change markets change like everything changes so fast even in a matter of a quarter six months mm -hmm. the market we're dealing with today is totally different than last year so it shifts quickly and if you're not if you don't shift with it, then you're going to be paying for it. For sure. So speaking of paying for it, I, I have run into this to a lot when people are selling their homes is you have the one that he wants to wipe down the counters and throw it on the internet. And then you have the guys that they want to add a 3000 square foot addition yeah. to maximize <laughs> their value of their house. Things to expect. Like there's times when you want to put a little more money into it to make it more sellable, but you've really got to find out that, that ratio of, how much is this going to cost me to how much am I actually going to get back in my yeah. home? What's the ROI? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Return so on I, investment. That yeah. took me a while to know the <laughs> ROI. Yeah. So there's a lot of things and that's what we do in like our initial visit. We'll go through the house and like, okay, this room's pink. Um, not a very like neutral color that mm -hmm. appeals to a lot of people. Let's um, maybe repaint this bedroom or the carpet in here is trash. There's th little things that you can do that you'll see a big different so you might invest two or three or five thousand dollars but on the back end you should see you know ten or fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars so you're not just throwing away money versus if you're like hey let's do a full-blown kitchen remodel that's 40 or 50 mm -hmm. grand that might not be the best thing to do and apply the money to but if you can a, another good example is if you have a basement that's mostly finished let's say you got sheetrock up and yeah. all you need to do is paint and carpet heck get that yeah, up double under square footage overnight right get that up and then you have you know the additional bedrooms and you can market it way better by just that additional upfront cost of finishing mm -hmm. those areas so there's there's things like that i think carpet and paint and presentation is probably the the biggest thing because if you can just make a house feel better and staging. Give it more of a blank canvas, like your neutral tones. That's why they work so well is because if you have a purple room, like Peyton was saying, you go, oh, there's no way. Where more of neutral, like a white page, you're thinking, okay, I can make this room what I want. I can see myself living here. Yeah. Because it's very, leads more to the imagination. Well, and we're all, we're emotional creatures. We just look at stuff and we're like, the more neutral and the more, it's like a blank canvas. You want people to be able to walk into your house mm -hmm. and not get distracted. Right. If you have all these pictures of your family and religious pictures and all this, like that starts pulling out. Oh, I know that person. I know this clients. If, if we go into a house and a lot of people like will put all their Christmas cards up on the fridge. I'll have clients sit and look at their Christmas cards. Yep. For, look at the people they know. For and, a few yeah. minutes, they'll be like, oh, I know that couple. And I'm like, hey, we're here to look at the house. Stay it, on it, task. Dis it distracts them. So pull off anything that's dist distracting, like family mm -hmm. photos. I think you pull those down. Like pull off anything that makes it, I mean, it, it feels weird, but makes it your home. You want the new buyers to walk in there and they'll see like, oh, this is a living room. There's a couch. There's some art. There's a table, coffee table, and like that's basically it. And then they can see 
they can imagine the room yep. however they want it to. But they see the I, the identity of the room, but they're not getting mixed up with all the other stuff Absolutely. that's in there. And, and speaking on that, uh, you know, take those emotions and stuff out of it. When you have a, an agent tell you, hey, we should paint this pink room, and it was your daughter's nursery, and, you know, they're, they're kind of picking your house apart, they're coming from a place of experience. They know what sells, what helps. A lot of people get really offended when you tell them, like, hey, you know, the baseball and basketball wallpaper in the master bedroom – it's just it's not that great for you know potential buyers. Yeah. With potential buyers as well, once once you do go under contract, they're going to pick your house apart. You used to be a fraternity house, because that's that's the that's their job. That's true. You can't be offended. So you got to be getting your heart ready that someone's going to take your childhood home, or maybe it was your grandma's home, or maybe it's the home you built with your wife, and they're going to try to make it sound the most undesirable piece of junk that they can, because they're trying to get a cheaper price from you. So. You go through and you get your presentation ready and you know of all these pitfalls and you don't have to be like, oh man, do we really have holes in the wall over or is the baseboard missing in the bathroom or just that prep helps with the heartache. Yeah, no, it's so true. I think it happens to all of us. It's like a good example. Um, I don't know if this is a great example. <laughs> Lay it on us. We can cut it so, out later. So I was thinking, <laughs> I'm like, if, if like my body, like I can go back and look at pictures when I was like 35 <laughs> pounds heavier, 40 pounds heavier. And it's interesting because I don't notice like the subtle changes over time. And at the time I'm like, oh, I was, I don't know. I just looked at myself in the same light almost. Mm -hmm. But we do that with our houses too. Like a house that, you know, you might not notice all the trim or nail holes or like mm -hmm. different colors because you've trained your eye to look past that. You've been there. Yeah. But an, another buyer walking in there will instantly pick it up, pick that up. So a good example is we have a listing coming up on the market this week, actually. And they did a big remodel. The shower head was missing the, the sprayer like on the shower. Okay. So it was just a pipe coming out. I caught on that the first thing when I, when, I, yeah. Yeah, when I toured it. But after going back through the house multiple times again, it doesn't even stand out to me anymore. It's interesting. So there's little things like that. Another thing to realize is the hardest part about being an agent is we're working with sellers who think they have the most amazing mm -hmm. house on the block. It's worth a billion dollars. And then you have a buyer that, well, they like that house, but their grandma's telling them, like, back when I bought my first house, I paid 50 mm -hmm. grand. Like, you're insane for paying this much. And we're trying to make the two meet in the middle on price and terms and everything. And it is, like, it, it's a hard process. So it's emotional. It's not just hard to do that. There's emotions on both sides, and that's what I mean, wars have been started over <laughs> feelings, you know. For real. And so you get these, a home is a, is an attached object. So it gets extremely emotional. And then you I, you have clients fight sometimes, like through the agents. You know, you get, no, I tell them that they can stick it. And, <laughs> you know, and yeah. you have the agent, well, I won't even sell them the house. I don't care. Just tell them. And it but, just, but it's yeah. funny. Then it's muffled. So the yeah. agent's <laughs> talking back and forth. They're like, hey. Sorry, that counter's not going to work for my clients, um, <laughs> but this one would. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And so it's like we're able right. to, like, muffle it back mm -hmm. and forth. And then because if agents, and sometimes agents aren't the greatest at this, and then you have the agent getting heated with the other agent, but, mm -hmm. like, the biggest part for the agents is we take what our clients are conveying to us and put it in a polite way. Polite, professional. Professional way. And we're right. like, hey, everybody wants this deal to work. Right. How can we make this work? And we kind of add dilute the, dilute some of the language out, I guess. You have to dilute it with a little bit of sugar and spice. <laughs> yeah. But there is sometimes that I've had I've had clients ask me to be very blunt mm -hmm. and a matter of the fact, you know, I don't use all the words some of my clients use. Right. But like, so, and sometimes it doesn't tell for it, but you have to be basically take the emotions out of it. We've talked about for that sure. before. Yeah. You take the emotions out of it and you have the upper hand whether you're a buyer or a seller. Yeah. And how you take those out is you prep. Yeah. So so buyers are going to pick your house apart. Be realistic. Ah, this is yes. a big one. Here's the thing. I've done this once and it, to him. He's like, yeah, yeah, we can get your house sold. You know, what do you want to do? I'm like, oh, I'll basically repaint my entire house, clean it, do this and do that, move half my stuff out. We'll be ready in two weeks for pictures, list in three weeks to a month. We did it, but I would never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to work till two o'clock in the morning anymore. Yeah. It, be realistic, plan. Like that's, you want to sell your house, start thinking about it early, you know? 
Exactly. Like start working on those projects. It's never too early to bring in an agent and be like, hey, I think we're going to sell in the next six months to a year. What would you recommend us start working on now to be ready to selling then? And then you're kind of locked and loaded, ready to go. Mm -hmm. I've even told some clients, because some clients don't know they want to sell until they find the right house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, let's get your house 100% ready to go, mm -hmm. get photos and everything so that we can be on the market. The second you find the house that you love, you can still write an offer and we can tell that agent, hey, their house isn't sold yet, but everything's done and ready. Here's pictures. Right. Here's the address. Like we can have this up on Wednesday. Yep. You you say, yes, we'll accept your offer and we'll put, we'll put our house on the market tomorrow. Yeah. And you're locked and loaded. If people took that approach versus... I've, and I get it. Like, I'm not, I, I understand how you fall into this. Like you're, you're scrolling the internet one night, you mm -hmm. see the house of your dreams. You're like, Hey, we have to move here. And then you're working backwards trying to catch yep. your tail yep. versus the minute that thought, Hey, we want to change houses. Like start thinking about these things, getting ready because you'll make more money when you sell, it'll be less stressful and you'll have a way better experience. Well, and, and one thing that I realized is when you do go to sell your house, all those projects that you've put off for years and years and years get done mm -hmm. and they get done fast. Oh, it's the worst. So, so just start saying, Hey, I'm going to sell my house tomorrow. And then you'll always have your to do projects done. Well, and think about your spouse and significant other. They would, the amount of brownie <laughs> points you're going to get <laughs> from yep. just having those done now is huge. And I've done every, there's only been one house that I've sold. All of my other houses we've kept as rentals. But whether I sell it or rent it, there's always this like 50 item list. And I'm like, oh, I got to go do all these things before I get ready to, to sell or rent it. And this last house that we moved into, we didn't move into it until everything was basically done. There's, we're still missing a few little things. Like your chimney cap? Like my chimney cap, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it, it's been like two years and I still don't have a chimney cap on. I have this piece of base underneath the, it's a toe kick under the cabinets that like keeps falling down. And we have a lady that will come and clean her house once a month. And she's like, she'll tell Carly, like, can you tell your husband just to finish like, this? Like all it would take is walking out to the shop, grabbing your brat and just, oh yeah. Or even a little glue, bu <laughs> bubble gum, you know? know. But if you get I, home, it, it's just, it's hard to do work in your own home. It, it is hard, you know? But may, maybe you hire that stuff out. You, you hire somebody true? and just say, hey, here's the punch list. Here's 500 bucks, knock it out, and 90% of those things are done, and then you're that much closer to being ready mm -hmm. to have it done. What if somebody has like a roof or a furnace, like some of those big, larger items? What do you uh, recommend I, to them? See, I really think that it, that comes down to uh, how old is the furnace? How bad is the roof? Like if, if it's get, the roof's going to be causing damage to your home, then yeah, get it fixed. Mm -hmm. Like you need to so you don't ruin your home and right. make it unsellable. And I think it comes to case by case basis. Sometimes it's easier to give, you know, depending on a financial situation, I can just give you, a you know, five hundred five thousand dollars off to put new shingles on. Right. Where I might not have five thousand dollars cash or ten thousand dollars cash to do a roof. Mm -hmm. So I think that's more base to base. But the biggest thing is find them because if if the roof is bad or if your furnace is, you know, rattling, tell your agent. You know, they have resources to for construction to cleaning to all the things that could help you get ready and they've probably done it 10 times so reach out to your agent even if it's way before you're ready to sell and find out well and i i think that's a unique thing about us too is we all obviously own homes mm -hmm. but we have flipped houses we have rentals mm -hmm. and even just the other day i gave ben a contact i'm like don't do that work like hire this guy mm -hmm. and like I have clients reach out to me all the time, like, hey, do you know a contractor for this or a roofer or we want to build a deck? And I, I can send them instantly two to four contacts of like, hey, these guys are good. They take care of you. You can reach mm -hmm. out, see who gives you the best price and who you relate with the most. But we have those contacts. Please use us for those resources and let us help you with, with those you know little projects here and there. And don't be afraid to reach out to us on those things especially on getting your house ready, it can be super overwhelming because, like, I'm a handy guy. But at the end of the day, it, it comes down to just time and energy. And so like Peyton said, he said, don't do that work, hire somebody. And you have to stop and go, okay, am I really saving any time? Like, I got to sacrifice my family time. Sometimes work time you're going to have to take off to work on these projects. If you have the time and the resources, 
do what you're good at and hire the rest. Yeah. And like I said, we're good at getting your home ready to sell. That's what we pride ourselves on. Call us. Like I said, even if you're not ready to sell, call us. You know, I, I, one day you're going to sell eventually, you're going to know somebody that's going to sell. Call us and use us like a tool. Yeah. So I have a, a good story on this. I have a listing coming up this week, actually. I've been in communication with these sellers for two years now. Okay. I met with them probably over a year at least. We walked through the house. I told them like what I thought could should be done in order for them to sell. There were some complications with them, like getting the house ready to sell, but they hired one of my recommended contractors to go through. They did a full-on, repainted the whole house, new carpet, flooring. They redid all the flooring in the basement. It was a, a fairly big project, but then now just barely, and then like they needed like some snow removal landscaping contacts, gave them those. So fast forward two years, um, now they're getting finally getting ready to list. The house looks amazing. We were able to come in. Um, it was it was 100% vacant. We staged it. We had the photographers there yesterday. We're doing drone, like Matterport, Matterport tour, and then professional photos throughout the whole inside. We're doing some, we weren't able to stage the whole house. It's 5,000 square feet, but we're, we're staging the main areas, the kitchen, living room, dining room, they have like a formal front sitting room, the master bedroom. We brought furniture into those areas. We're virtually staging the other rooms. And today we have a video guy going through doing like a really cool video tour with like a vo voiceover. So like because we had all this, we've been working on it for this long, I'm excited to see the end, end result. But moral of the story is incorporate your agent as you start needing to like you start thinking of hey we're going to move we're going to make this change it's never too early to start counseling with like your real estate agent and contractors and getting ready mm -hmm. for that like a, a real estate agent is like a general contractor for the process of selling your house they can help you line out everybody as far as other subs yeah. i.e picture guys uh contractors painters anything like that as well as show you or help you do it yourself right I think people get scared because they're like, if I call Ben, I'm gonna have to sell. I'm gonna have to sell. I'm gonna feel bad because yeah. he does work. And <laughs> I, that is one thing I hate for to hear from people is, oh, you've done all this work. I feel bad because you know we decided not to sell. That's the job. You right. Know? That's why I enjoy doing it. If I didn't enjoy it, yeah, I'd be mad that you didn't sell. But I enjoy it. I enjoy meeting with people. It's different. It's almost like not work for me anymore. It's fun. When I think we look at it differently too, because. I'm not doing it just to check a deal off and make a commission. Like if I can help somebody out that doesn't even use me to sell, they know three to five people mm -hmm. that are probably going to sell or buy in within the next year. And if I could be a tool or a resource to them, then they'll be like, Hey, when somebody mentions to mm -hmm. them that they're trying to relocate or move to the area, they'll be like, call Payton or call Ben, you know? So like I enjoy those opportunities to serve and help people out. So, when you say, oh, I feel bad, remember, we are using you as well. We are, we <laughs> yeah, are taking true. everything we can <laughs> from you, you know, and that's part of the game is you live and die by referrals. And so if you don't do a good job and if you're just in it for the paycheck and at the end of the day, you're going to dry up because you don't have that connection with people. Right. And that's how our business you know? thrives is off of referrals and doing good work. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be around if, if that wasn't the case. So I think to wrap this all up, one of the biggest last topics is there's no easy way about it. It's going to suck. Yes. It's just how can we make it less sucky? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's like it's like, it's like like going on a hike. No one likes to hike or jog. I do. But if you got, <laughs> but, but if you got good shoes or a good bike or a good gear and you got someone to show you the right trails, it'll be easier. If you have an e-bike. Still gonna suck. We we we're the e-bikes of the real estate. Yeah. <laughs> we just you get yeah. on it, pedal and like we'll push you up the mountain. I'm like the crew ranger with the AC and <laughs> heater in it. You know, <laughs> yeah. doors the whole nine. Yeah. So it's not gonna be easy on our website even right now. I think it says selling your home should be fun, and I'm like, we gotta take that <laughs> off because I'm like, I I agree, buying a home is is probably more fun, but selling a home. Mm -hmm is never that fun. It's fun right. when you f when you figure out, okay, we're going from A to B. Once you know where B is, B right. is more fun, but A is not fun. Selling right. a house is not fun. But we're here to make that process easier. And hopefully throughout this episode, there's some things that you were able to take away and like, 
think about, trigger some thoughts, but it's not an easy process. There's things you can do to make it easier and to make it more rewarding at the end. And I can't stress this enough. Don't lie. If you choose an agent and you're working with them, don't lie to him. If, if he says, okay, this week, you know, really focus on getting that bathroom painted or whatever you might do and, and say you decided to not do anything that week, just tell him. Because all he's trying to do is make sure that he's staying on your pace or she's staying on, you know, on top of your schedule and how your lifestyle is going. Be honest with yourselves. Be honest with your agents. And we're only going to push you as hard as you, the expectation you set for yourself. Yeah. I, so. I think that's super important because a lot of people be like, we just don't want to feel like we're dropping the ball. And so it's weird if, if you're like, hey, we wanted to be on the market in Jan like I have sellers right now. They wanted to, we were talking about being on the market January one, but it keeps being delayed, not on my end, right. but because their life and, and circumstances. Right. But the more we're able to communicate back and forth, the more I know like, how much pressure to be or how much service to provide, right. basically. So having that clear communication and expectation of like, hey, actually, we're going to press pause on this or slow this down a little right. bit for a month and then give us we really need from start to finish a good two weeks to really market and get your home ready that's from okay it's staged it looks great like we need two two weeks to get that two weeks ready for to go. when you're ready you right know, that, that's that's a really good window for us to maximize our efforts we can do it faster but it, it's never fun being like hey we're ready we want our house on the market wednesday it's just no that's not it's not and, the best way and, to do it and you don't want to do that to yourself either no you know so well i think we've covered just about everything i hope so anything else you want to throw in there last minute tidbits of wisdom mm, not really other than remember we use you so even if even if you're not going to sell your home in the next five years and you want us to come out and look at it, we will. Yeah. You know, yeah like, we're, we're getting value out of it through you. Yeah. Whether it's a paycheck or, you know, we're not about it for the paycheck. It's for the, the connections. So that helps us. I'm asking, actually. Let me do free work for you. Right. So let us let us come and help you guys out. And we're very, we don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that doesn't want to be in a relationship with us. So we're not going to be like, sign the paper. Right. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, you want to work with us? Great. If not, that's cool too. So anyways, great episode. Thank you. Best one yet. Till next time. See you guys. <laughs>